Hi folks, thanks for joining me. You're looking at a number of uh, power transformers here on the old workbench. Still going through uh, testing and documenting a few. This is my uh, third box of some of the donor power transformers from uh, old vintage uh, radios and or television sets that I've had for a, a number of years. And I'm just going through uh, making some notes documenting everything in a small little uh, database and uh, have those for future projects. Anyway, what came to mind is a great article that I read about a month ago as I was uh, doing some of the testing and it's always something that um, I've always you know, trying to figure out how to uh, understand or figure out would be your high voltage winding and understanding what the uh, current capacity of the power transformer should be. So, if you look at the description of this video, you'll see I've got a link to an article from Electronics World, and it's named Rating Unknown Power Transformers, and the author, all the credit for this goes back to a Mr. H.Q. Dugwood. He put two figures together, or what we would, you know, really probably call charts uh, today, where he took uh, old power transformers like these and documented the uh, results two different ways one looking at ohms per volt and we'll go through one of these mathematically and take Mr. Dudwood's uh, math and apply it to this transformer and uh, do some calculations and then the second chart for figure two references back to the primary resistance and what the overall current capacity could be on the primary side in AC amps, again, or current. So it's a very interesting read. Hope you find it uh, helpful. Let's apply it to uh, this transformer here real quick and uh, look at the results. You folks have seen me and many others test power transformers and easily identify the leads. I never really thought about it this way, but I think Mr. Doug really just keeps it simple. If you're testing a power transformer like this, you should always find your high voltage windings are the ones that have the highest amount of DC resistance. So just going from a lead to lead, you can see I already have these called out and separated. But this is my uh, high voltage uh, windings here, with the uh, center being the center tap. You can reference the uh, picture in picture to get a visual how this would tie in to a uh, power supply circuit. And uh, these would be the uh, two plate connections here, uh, where you see my red and black leads attached. So I'm looking at my highest DC resistance across these two points. We'll call this uh, 253 ohms. So let's uh, just make note of that. Then we'll come back to the calculator in just a moment and uh, plug in the second number that we need. Moving along, the second thing we need to understand is the high voltage across these two points. I will not be using my variac for that. Simply, I'm going to use my audio signal generator, generate a tone around 1000 hertz at 5 volts here to the primary input side. So uh, let me flip on the uh, generator real quick. And we'll move the leads over. Flip the uh, meter on here on the AC side. And uh, just test here for uh, roughly 5 volts. I'm using a uh, cheap analog uh, generator. So it's uh, not rock solid, but it's close enough for this exercise. What I'm doing here is just adjusting the attenuation setting. And uh, you can see I have uh, 5.03 with the uh, meter leads across it, uh, which creates just a little bit of a load. I'll take the uh, leads loose here. Apply them across the uh, high voltage 
winding. Again, the center tap being here, I'm going to just go all the way across, which would be the uh, plate to plate connection points. And you can uh, see my uh, reference of uh, 26.7. So let's document that number. Looking back at the uh, HV winding one more time, you can see 26.5. And on the primary side, we read 5 volts. Look at the calculator here. I can take the uh, 26.5 that we had just a moment ago, divide that by 5. That comes out to 5.3. I can multiply that number by what I think my modern day line voltage would be. We'll plug in 120 volts AC. And you can see theoretically that's going to give me 636 volts between uh, this point and this point. And if we divide that by 2, theoretically there will be a slight difference. I should have 318 volts from this point to this point, from this point back to this point. So let's go plug these numbers in now to the calculator. Back to the DC resistance here, 253 ohms divided by the calculated voltage of 636 volts. So 253 divided by 636, you can see that gives us 0.3977. We could just round up, keep things simple, let's say 0.40 ohms per volt. Let me grab the uh, chart here, or figure 2, and let's see where this comes out. Okay, hopefully I have this position where you guys can see it. Hopefully you're following along in the article that I'm uh, referencing uh, in the description. But you can see we calculated uh, 0.4 ohms per volt. And I've got a, a dashed line going up. So if I go straight up, this first slanted line that you see here is a capacitor input. The uh, second line above that is a choke input. You can see the uh, choke input itself is uh, more forgiving. Um, as far as the uh, the milliamp reading, but uh, if I just move to the left here, you can see what my calculated uh, milliamp in uh, DC would be for this particular um, uh, power transformer measured at the uh, first input cap. So um, just based off the uh, research, um, somewhere around 80 milliamps, uh, plus or minus a bit for the uh, capacitor input, and you can see I'm just north of 100 milliamps if I were to use a uh, choke input. So uh, very helpful. On my tag, I'm going to uh, put down uh, both of these numbers just for uh, reference. Now let's uh, move along down here and apply the math to uh, figure number three, where we look at the uh, primary input resistance of the uh, power transformer and uh, see what this tells us. Let's move the uh, meter leads now from the high voltage back over to the uh, primary input and read the uh, DC resistance here of the uh, primary windings and uh, you can see I have 4.8 ohms of uh, DC resistance. Let me make a note of that. Back to the meter here, you can see we uh, read 4.7 to 4.8. I tried to plug that in here in this uh, hash mark line. Starting down here with the primary resistance in ohms, I worked myself up here to the slanted line and back to the left. And now uh, you can see I'm just under uh, 0.7 amps of uh, current on the uh, input side of the uh, primary. So another uh, great you know, indicator for um, using this uh, particular transformer in a uh, power supply. There's also some great math in the article itself. If you really want to understand the unloaded plate-to-plate -plate voltage versus the uh, loaded 
plate to plate uh, voltage on the AC side and uh, how to calculate the uh, voltage uh, loss itself. Not the DC, but the uh, AC itself. So it's uh, very interesting and the math is uh, called out here in the uh, article for reference. So uh, hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, you know, Mr. Dugwood went to, uh, I'm sure, a lot of trouble to document all the old uh, power transformers like this. But, but for uh, folks like us that are um, into the hobby for uh, old TV repair or vintage uh, radio repair, his uh, techniques uh, should help us, you know, identify the uh, potential current capacity of the uh, HV winding. Anyway, folks, uh, thanks for joining. Let's end the video on a little Philco radio that I'm restoring for my sister. So uh, much work ahead of me on that. And then I'll turn my attention to the uh, cabinet itself. And at the same time, focus back on that little majestic international cabinet and uh, wrap up those uh, this fall uh, before we pull the uh, silver tone radio back in and start on the electronic restoration on it. But uh, Sis's radio comes uh, first. Here's an oldie playing. Thank uh -huh.